We're going to start out the show with a wonderful tea sandwich recipe. Um, actually, we've got a few different tea sandwich recipes, and this is one that actually I had at a tea years ago, and I've been dreaming of it ever since. And I went to work and, and you know, tried to figure out, recreate this tea sandwich that I had, and I think you'll really enjoy it. It's a spinach tea sandwich, um, and it is absolutely fantastic. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually, we've got one box of frozen spinach, and you let it thaw. You don't wanna cook the spinach. Um, what I usually do, if I didn't think to pull it out and let it defrost in the fridge, I'll throw it in the microwave, but you have to be careful with that because you don't wanna actually you know, over microwave it so that you cook the spinach. You just want it to, to thaw out, and, um, and then I'm gonna squeeze it dry. It's real important to do that because frozen spinach, although it's super convenient, is full of water so I usually just take my clean hands and squeeze the heck out of it and get every little last bit of that water out there usually that spinach is pretty cold because I just just uh, get it to the point where it's thawed so my hands are freezing right now oh, it does kind of hurt okay there we go done my hands wash Perfect. Okay, so one box of frozen spinach thawed and squeezed dry, and squeezed uh, dry very well. Then we're going to do one packet of vegetable soup mix. This is a dry vegetable soup mix, and I use this to make actually a spinach dip. So if you like that spinach dip in a bread bowl recipe, which I happen to love, I think you're really going to enjoy these tea sandwiches. So then we've got some mayo real mayonnaise sour cream this is going to make quite a bit and one can of water chestnuts I get the sliced water chestnuts but because these are going to go in tea sandwiches, I really want to chop them up fine. So this recipe is very, very similar to actually the spinach dip recipe that you might be familiar with. I know I have a great, this isn't a baked sandwich. It's a, these are actually served cold or room temperature. But I do a spinach dip recipe in a bread bowl that is just one of my favorites. It's in one of my cookbooks and people always ask me for the recipe so this is very much very similar to this but we're going to put it on bread and it's fantastic we're going to make two little sandwiches so I've got my water chestnuts and the one thing I forgot to do is I really like to rinse them with some water and get rid of any type of the liquid in the can that might be on those I am also going to take the time to dry them a little bit so with a clean kitchen towel or paper towels. I just don't want these tea sandwiches to be soggy in any way. Thank you, Ann. Now, if you're having a tea party, um, and just like any type of party, it's really important to get as much done ahead of time so you can be actually hanging out with your guests and having a good time and you won't be stuck in the kitchen the whole time. And that's why um, doing a, a tea or uh, tea party is a great way to entertain because it's very inexpensive. Um, you know, we're not doing real fancy food um, and a lot of it can be made ahead of time. So let's say you're serving a lovely fruit salad, some mini desserts. Uh, this bread can be completely done ahead of time and then you can just assemble the sandwich quickly uh, quickly before your guests get there. Okay, so at this point I'm just gonna really chop up these water chestnuts so they'll have a little bit of a crunch. But tea parties are supposed to be kind of dainty. And there should be, you know, little sandwiches, little desserts, lots of little bite-sized goodies. And of course, tea, iced tea and hot tea. So I really like to try, chop these up pretty finely. Mm. 
perfect. Get those in there. Thank you, Ann. And then last but not least, we're going to do a little bit of chive or scallions. I just want a hint of onion flavor, but you know, again, this is a ladies thing, so we want to finely chop these. I'm using chives. Again, you could also use scallions, just finely chop them. It's going to give that hint of onion flavor without onion overload. Okay. I'm just going to mix this together, and as I said, this spread can be made up to a day or two. I wouldn't do much more than that um, in advance and parked in your refrigerator until you're ready to use it. All right, now let's get to the sandwiches. And it actually is nice to make this at least a few hours before this spread because the flavors really combine and when they sit in the fridge, they'll be much more flavorful than s serving it right away. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna take our bread. In this case, I'm just using ordinary um, white sliced bread. You could also use wheat bread or a combination of the two. And I don't want to get the real, real soft, squishy bread. This is a little bit firmer. This is from the bakery. So it's still soft, but not super soft because it's got to hold up to the spread. So at this point, I'm going to just take the crust off. We're going to be very dainty here. when you do a tea, that's part of it, is usually these cute little sandwiches without crusts. So you can take those crusts and, you know, you don't need to throw those out. Um, you can actually throw them in your food processor, or even at this point, you can throw them um, in a Ziploc bag and then throw them in your food processor, throw them in the freezer. Um, and they're great for, you know, meatloaves or breadcrumb on top of your casserole. It's a way to make homemade breadcrumbs, really. Or, as Ann says, to the birdies. My mom and I used to go to a place in Arizona called the Sugar Bowls in Scottsdale, Arizona. And they had the best little tea sandwiches there. And actually, she and my dad just went, and I said, was it still the same? And they, she said, it was still the same, still... Still is good. They did a ham salad, an egg salad, and a tuna salad. It was so yummy. They look so cute. Okay, so now we're going to start making these sandwiches. And you just start assembling them. Um, I like to butter the bread because that's another thing that oftentimes makes these sandwiches a little more special, special I should say. So I butter both sides with some softened butter, real butter. That also is going to coat the bread and keep it from getting real soggy, and it's going to give some nice flavor too. Okay. You get the idea. And now we'll start assembling some of the sandwiches. So we take a little of the spread. You don't want to overfill these. Again, you want to think dainty and ladies, and you know you don't want a lady to bite into the sandwich and have half the filling come out. That's no good. So we're going to take some of the spread. Spread it on our buttered bread. And then there's two different ways you can cut these. It's up to you how you want to do it. You can do it on an angle. So that you actually have little finger sandwiches like this. And this is where the whole finger sandwich thing came in, is they're just like little fingers. Or you can do them on an 
angle like this so that you get little you know, triangles. It's up to you how you want to present them. They're both going to be fantastic. You definitely want to uh, pile them up on a plate and uh, do different varieties of tea sandwiches. So stick around because later we're going to make another one of my favorites. Um, this one is a bacon and egg salad tea sandwich. It's fantastic. And we're also going to show you how to take an ordinary can of olives and uh, make it into a really wonderful spread that's also perfect for tea sandwiches. So I'm just going to keep on building my platter here and uh, we will be back with more great recipes and ideas for a tea party. So stay with us.